Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to go through a wee tutorial on just finishing off your crochet pieces. So um, covering how to weave in the ends. Um, just a few wee tips and tricks that I've got that might make it a bit easier because I know this is a task that um, a lot of people really don't like doing. It is tedious and annoying sometimes and Certainly one of the downsides of doing colour work with lots of different colours is that you end up with more ends to weave in. Um, but I'll just show you a few things that um, I do that make things a wee bit easier. Um, so here I've got, I've been working on, um, I've done the six day star blanket by the amazing Betty McNutt. So I highly recommend her patterns on her website. Um, and she kindly let me know that she's done a granny square version of the pattern so my plan is to make eight squares and then make that into a cushion to match the, the blanket so I've finished three so I thought I would bring you with me for um, weaving in the ends and then um, next time I'm going to do a um, video about blocking um, so it's showing you what I use and how um, I do it to block them that just really helps these pieces keep their shape so um, this is one of the squares here, so you need that and you need a yarn needle. Um, the benefit of a yarn needle, if you can see, is that the eye is quite big so that you can thread yarn through it. Um, obviously most yarn, yarn tends to have a wee bit of a fray at the end, so it's quite hard to, to feed it through. So um, we'll do the middle one first. So what I do is I just basically fold it over, just like that, if you can see, let me... Zoom in a bit better. So fold it over like that, hold it tight, and then just kind of push it through the eye of the needle. Um, so this this is the reason you do want to leave yourself a bit of a length um, for your tails, so that you've got room to manoeuvre. And then for these middle parts, I just sort of feed it around, um, and you're just kind of going through those kind of initial stitches for um, as many as you can. And then just pulling it through, and then where's I put the? And then what I like to do is just pull it out just a couple of millimeters, snip it off, and then when you flatten it out, that end should disappear into the work. So that keeps that nice and secure. And then we've obviously got the end of the square where it's been fastened off. So, uh, try not to drop your uh, needles on the floor, that's very really annoying when that happens. Here we go, so same again, so we're just folding over the yarn and holding it quite far up and then it's almost a case of kind of rolling it over and then pushing it through the eye. And then that's you got your ends there, so for the this I tend to kind of go back through a couple of stitches there and then just work your way along into the so these are kind of the, the bottom loops of the single crochets um, that make up the last round of this square so once go through it, I usually try and go through at least an inch or so, um, maybe longer. Just so that you've got plenty of wiggle room, because if you leave your end too short and only weave in for maybe two or three stitches, then there is more of a risk of it coming undone um, and slipping out. Whereas if you weave it in quite a distance, that's much less likely that that's going to happen. Um, and then you can see it's it's almost invisible. Not quite, but you would only see it if you're looking closely. And this is the wrong side, so um, if there is, depending on your project, if you've got a right side and a wrong side, then try and weave in on the wrong side, um, because then it's less likely that it's going to be seen. Um, as you can see on the right side of this, you can't see it at all, really. Um, very difficult to see and then again just pulling it a wee bit snuffing it off and then it just goes back into the work and it stays nice and hidden and then there we go 
So that that's how I weave in the ends um, for these crochet pieces. It just uh, yeah, just makes it all look very good. So that's that. Um, so this one's got a couple um, this bits where I had to um, some of this yarn got a bit tangled and I ended up having to cut it in a couple of places to fix it so um, but this one is where I've knotted on the the yarn so we've got two um, two strands so um, and it's actually perfectly possible just do the same thing fold it over and hold it tight and then you're just kind of rolling it over and sliding it through a wee bit of a wiggle and then you can do it with the two needles um, not the two needles, the two strands I mean um, and then just do the same thing again and go through a few stitches um, just like um, when I was explaining how to do the magic ring um, gentle even pressure is less likely to risk yarn snapping or something going wrong so when you're um, sewing or when you're trying to tighten something um, you know the temptation is just to yank it but slow even strength um, pressure and just traction and just take your time and it'll it'll come and it'll it'll go um because even i mean it's less likely with acrylic yarn but if you pull it hard enough you can break it you can break the yarn and it can snap off which obviously isn't ideal so um like with anything um like that as i said just steady pressure um and taking it slow um and it'll go much smoother and it's gonna be less likely to, to damage your piece so um <clears throat> that's my rule of thumb um and I say it's because of my experience as a surgeon um you know and especially um I did work a lot on you know small pets you know gerbils mice rats um and things like that so um, you know, things were much, much more delicate than in a dog um, and the suture material you had to use was very, very fine, so very, very thin, um, which meant that it was more prone to um, breakage than the stuff that you could get away with using in dogs and even cats. Um, so it's quite important. See here, so that's again, we're working with two strands, so just steady pressure. And it goes much smoother. Um, so exactly the same as what I um, showed you for your magic rings is just to take it slow and just keep steady, even pressure. So even if it's stubborn, it'll give way. Um, so and again, we'll slide it out just a few wee millimetres. There we go. Perfect. And then the last one. So again, folding it in half. And I say the trick is to, to kind of say just you sort of roll it over and feed it through. And again, it's um, being a surgeon, I got very good at threading needles for. Um, stitching because you know you had to do it a lot and with gloves on as well which makes it harder to really kind of feel what you're doing um so you know it took a while to get used to doing all these things while wearing latex gloves because you obviously you have to keep everything clean and sterile when you're doing surgery and that applies to animals just the same as it does for humans so um, you know, you had to learn how to manage all these things um, while keeping sterility because, 
you know, when you're scrubbed in, you can't touch anything else that's not sterile. Um, that kind of thing. You can't do what you would maybe do with sewing thread and, you know, lick it and then, <laughs> and then thread it through the needle to stiffen it. That's obviously not, uh, not allowed in surgery. So um, it is something that I kind of learned to, to get the hang of um, very quickly in my career. Because um, I, I was doing that really before I'd picked up um, any kind of fibre craft as a whole base. So, uh, let me zoom out a wee bit there. That's better. So you can see the whole piece. So that's another one finished here. Um, but yeah, I'm just working um, through all this. I've been struggling to do a lot of crocheting. Um, recently because my arthritis has been bad um, and that's making my hands really sore. Um, I'm off, I've am i had to come off one of my medications for my psoriatic arthritis which means um, that unfortunately I'm, I'm in the midst of a bit of a symptom flare which is uh, not fun but hopefully um, I have to go and get more blood done in a couple of weeks so hopefully um, things will be better and I'll be able to get back on it um, but I've been working away on this and um, for some reason my brain has gone into absolute overdrive with ideas today for other things so um, one thing that I'm considering is a little um, series of um, plushies based on like cells in the body and like maybe parasites and things i know i've seen a company that makes like plushies of you know like sewn plushies um so i've actually got one that i picked up at the london vet show a couple of years ago which is a little giardia um parasite so giardia is a little protozoal parasite um so i've got a cute little uh plushy one um and i think i'd quite like to experiment with crochet and stuff like that um you know, making little red blood cell, white blood cells. Um, you know, fun stuff like that. We'll see. Um, but it's it's an idea that's kind of popped into my head that I'm toying with. So, um, I'd love to know what you think. Um, if you think that'd be something fun, um, to do, and it might be quite a good little kind of pack of um patterns. So I could have, um, have a go at making my own version of Giardia. Um, maybe do fleas, um, toxoplasma is a fun one as well, like there's so many creepy crawlies and things and it'd be fun to make them, you know, cute. I'd quite like to do tardigrades as well, you know, the water bears, because I think they're amazing and adorable. <laughs> like they're so cool and fascinating. Um, maybe a horseshoe crab as well. That could be quite fun to go along with them. Um, I see on my other kind of channel and things, I'm doing a series about the kind of creatures of Fallout and all the um insects and bugs and things. Then I'm going to move on to do the animals and you know the mirelurks are really quite interesting and they are kind of partly based off the horseshoe crabs. But again, horseshoe crabs are fascinating. There's a lot of kind of interesting research being done on them you know in the context of kind of medical stuff um which is fascinating and if i remember rightly this um, i need to double check this for sure but i'm pretty sure their, their blood is actually blue i don't know i'm just rambling but at least if i put these ideas here then um i'm more likely to remember to actually look into them the problem is is that have too many ideas and not enough time to do them all when I think of them but there we go so that's three granny squares down and um, so I'm gonna end up making a total of eight and then we'll join them together and I'll also up a cushion um to the right size so um I've got some spare pink cotton that should work really really nicely alongside this yarn um so We'll sew up a cushion, we'll put these together. Um, so that's the kind of method to weaving in the ends for um, sort of flat crochet pieces like this. That That's the technique that I use. And just a couple of wee hints and tips for threading the yarn into the, the needle. Um, 
that just make it much much easier um, because that's something I know I struggled with um, for a while but I've kind of got the, the knack of it now so hopefully that's helpful for you and I say next time we are going to do some blocking so I've got these and I've got some of the washcloths that I've made that I need to block so um, we'll be getting that done and um, so hopefully you'll join me for that um, and thanks for watching hope this helps and um, any thoughts drop them in the comments see you later bye